Here's more late news. New York, the latest Singapore communique is broadcast by the London radio, says British fighters are strafing enemy troops in the Malay Peninsula. Around Kedar, the British radio says the Royal Air Force has successfully harassed enemy troops in communications. And British fighters drove off three attempts by Japanese planes to raid Penang. In Burma, waves of British fighter planes roar over Rangoon at every alert. But the Burmese capital has not yet been bombed, according to London Radio, heard in New York by the NBC Listening Post. London, an Anglo-Russian conference, will open in Moscow soon to coordinate the work of the two general staffs. It may clear the way for a joint plan of strategy by all anti-Axis powers, including the United States, for offensive as well as deep... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jack Benny talking. And before our program begins, I'd like to say a word or two about defense bonds. You know, right now, we're all partners. You and I and the family next door. And we've all got a job to do. A job that's going to require a lot of money. And that money must come from you and me and all of us. So let's decide right now that we're going to put every possible dollar into defense bonds. Every possible dime into defense stamps. Buy bonds at your post office, bank, or savings and loan association. Get your defense stamps from your retail store or ask your newsboy to deliver them to your home every week. Let's really do a job. Thank you. J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program brought to you by Jell-O and Jell-O Pudding, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with Thank Your Lucky Stars and Stripes. For many years, dessert lovers have been buying Jell-O and looking for the big red letters on the box. J-E-L-L-O, Jell-O, is a trademark, the property of General Foods. And folks have come to know that it stands for the very finest in flavor and quality. Today, as always, the Jell-O that you enjoy so much comes in that same familiar package with the big red letters on it. But the Jell-O inside that package is new and different. Now, Jell-O brings you more flavor than ever before. By means of a wonderful new Jell-O process, Jell-O's rich taste and tingle is locked right into the tiny Jell-O particles, protected against loss of flavor. And that keeps Jell-O at the peak of its goodness. Just prove it for yourself. Open a package of Jell-O. Notice that there's no telltale aroma, no sign of escaping flavor and fragrance. Yet the instant you dissolve the Jell-O, you unlock its captive flavor, and out it pours for your pleasure. Get several boxes of Jell-O tomorrow. The package is the same, but the Jell-O inside is better than ever, thanks to Jell-O's new locked-in flavor. <laughs> that was Thank Your Lucky Stars and Stripes played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this being the height of the Christmas shopping season, let us leave the studio and journey two blocks north to Hollywood Boulevard, where we find Jack Benny's Maxwell cruising along and holding up traffic as usual. Gee, I wish we could find a place of... Come on, get going, get going! Take it easy, will you? What's the rush? Get that cement mixer off the street. Says you. Guy's lucky I got my glasses on. <laughs> Rochester, can't you step on it a little bit? Boss, this car couldn't go any faster if it was spring and there was a pretty match well up ahead. <laughs> all right, then, just drive. Boy, the streets sure are crowded today. I hope I can get all my shopping done. How far is it to the store? About eight more blocks. You think we'll make it by Christmas? Mary, we've got ten days at the cinch. <laughs> and don't be so... Whoop! There's a place, Rochester. Where? Oh, somebody else pulled in there. My goodness, we've been an hour and a half just looking for a place to park the car. Well, why don't you spend 15 cents and put it on a lot? Because the streets belong to the people, and I'm a people. <laughs> I mean... Oh, for heaven's sake, Rochester. What's the matter? You just missed another swell place to park, up by that lamppost. That's all right. This car only turns left. <laughs> oh, yes, I forgot. 
the steering rod's broken, Mary. Well, if the car doesn't turn right, how are we going to get back to Beverly Hills? I got it all mapped out, Miss Livingston. We go straight to Pasadena, left to Bakersfield, <laughs> left to Oxnard, then down the coast and home. <laughs> We'll get home all right. Once we get the car face circle, we can head in any direction. <laughs> Are you comfortable up there in front, Dennis? Oh, I'm fine, Mr. Benny. That's good. And Dennis, please take that sign off your back. Well, I want it there. You don't need it. Everybody knows you're not Japanese. <laughs> Now, take it off. Well, I've been mowing your lawn so much, everybody calls me Togo. <laughs> Never mind. The kid's got a face like Jigs, and he's worried. <laughs> Believe me, Dennis. Whoop, whoop. There's a whoop, whoop. What are you whoop, whooping about? Rochester, there's a place to park right across the street. Can't do it, boss. I'll have to make a U-turn. A U-turn? There's a $2 cover charge for that, and no floor show. <laughs> Well, make it. Nobody's looking. Grab hold of the door, Mary, so it won't fly open. The door's on your side. Oh, yes. Well, here we are. Uh-oh, a whistle. Is that a policeman? It ain't the Chattanooga choose you. It's a cop, all right. Shut the motor off. Gee. What are you going to do, Jack? Quiet. Dennis, you're Irish. You talk to the policeman. Gosh, I don't know what to say. All right, let me handle it. I'll think of something. Hey, you. What's the idea of making a U-turn in the middle of the block? Eh? What's that, son? I said, what's the idea of making a U-turn in the middle of the block? Don't you know that's against the law? Well, I'll tell you, officer, I don't get to the city very often, so I don't know much about them newfangled laws you got here. <laughs> what a performance! <laughs> Edry, be quiet. You see, officer, I live out Sherman Oaks way, and I just drove my old lady and my boy in to see Santa Claus. Patooey. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that right, Miranda? You're darn tootin'. Patooey. <laughs> This is the missus, officer. Glad to know you, ma'am. Now look, old-timer, you got to observe the traffic rules while driving in the city. Well, I'll tell you. Get your gun, Pa. That man's a revenuer. <laughs> Esri? Well, officer, I reckon we'll mosey along now. Thanks very much for your advice. All right, old-timer, but don't let this happen again. I won't. So long. Merry Christmas, officer. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> well, got to get the shopping done. Drive on, Zeke. Oh, boss, come now. <laughs> Rocket. Get going, Zeke. <coughs> Gotta get that shopping done. There's a place over there, Rochester. Oh, darn it. Someone beat us to it. Now, listen, Jack. If you don't put this car in a parking lot, I'm getting out. Oh, all right. But I don't see why... Rochester, stop in front of that cigar store. I'll be back in a minute, Mary. You can cash in those coupons some other time. <laughs> okay, Smarty, but if those pearl necklaces, number 58, are all gone, you'll be the one to suffer. <laughs> Now, where's the parking lot? There's one up the road a piece, Pa. Pitooey. Dennis, you're not a rube anymore, so take that black jack gum off your tooth. Rochester, drive into this parking lot here. Okay, boss. Come on, Mary, get out. You too, Dennis. Dennis, get out. Wait a minute. My pants are caught in the springs. <laughs> you wouldn't sit on that newspaper. You had to be a smart alley. Now hurry. Here comes the attendant. Hey, buddy, be careful where you put this car. I don't want the fender scraped. I'll be back in an hour. Sorry, mister. I can't accept this car until it gets dark. What? 
What do you mean? I knew this was going to happen someday. <laughs> now, look, buddy, that sign says cars parked 25 cents, and here's my quarter. Now, park my car. Okay, but I'm going to hide it in back of that billboard. <laughs> All right, hide it. Come on, Mary. Hey, hey, wait a minute. How do I know you'll come back for this thing? <laughs> I'll come back, don't worry. Come on, Mary. Okay. Hey, buddy. Yeah, lady? That steering rod is broken, so if you want to turn right, you got to go through Pomona. <laughs> Let him find out for himself, the wise guy. Rochester, I'll meet you right here in an hour. Okay, boss. And remember, for every bottle of horseradish you sell, you get three cents. <laughs> See you later. Dennis, you stay with Rochester and sing. That'll attract the crowd. Okay. Come on, Mary. Mary, don't look at me that way. That horseradish grows wild in my backyard. <laughs> You're my filigadusha, shinamarusha, balleraldo, bum, foodie, rose of day, rose of day. You're my filigadusha, shinamarusha, balleraldo, bum, foodie, rose of day, rose of day. You're my filigadusha, shinamarusha, balleraldo, bum, foodie, your daring, your darling, your lovely. That's what I mean when I say Rose O'Day, Rose O'Day. You're my filigadusha, shinamarusha, balarala, bum, tootie, Johnny McCarthy loved Rosie O'Day. She was the prettiest thing, so they say. And every night in this sweet Irish way, under her window he'd sing in this way. Nan Moriarty sued on a who. Mary Malone and the rest sure they do. They all want his favors, but what does he do? He sings to the one he loves best that he do. Rose O'Day, Rose O'Day. You're my filigadusha, shinamarusha, balarala, boom, tootie, rose o'day, rose o'day. You're my filigadusha, shinamarusha, balarala, boom, tootie, you're daring, you darling, oh, you're lovely. That's what I mean when I say, rose o'day, oh, rose o'day. You're my figadoosh, shinamarusha, balarala, bum, booty, bum, booty, bum, booty. We all day. Everybody pushing and shoving. Oh, Mary, have you got my Christmas list? Yes, here it is. What does it say? Unless my vacuum cleaners return before January 1st, I shall take legal action. Sign Ronald Coleman. The list is on the other side. Let's have it. Well, why don't you give Mr. Coleman back his vacuum cleaner? Because Mr. Billingsley took it apart and made a bagpipe out of it. <laughs> it's all I hear around the house lately. The Campbells are coming. Ta-ra, ta-ra. Well, let's see. What's on the list here? A safety razor for Don. Hey, oh, my goodness. Hey, buddy. Buddy, what are you doing with your hand in my pocket? Like you said, we're buddies. <laughs> You're a pickpocket. Get out of here. Hmm. Now, let's see. Let's see, a razor for Don, a dozen blades for Phil, and a bird on a stick that goes brrrr for Dennis. Remember, Mary, last week he told me he wanted one. You told me at Cyril's last night you were going to buy Dennis a grand piano. Last night I had over four glasses of Muscatel. <laughs> I'm all right now, so where's the toy department? Let's ask the floor walker. There he is. Oh, yes. Dennis will love that bird on a stick. How much do they cost, Jack? Oh, 15 cents. Or $15. Who knows? You do. <laughs> All right. Anyway, he'll love it. 
Uh, pardon me, sir. Are you the floor walker? What do you think I am with this carnation? A flower pot? <laughs> looking for a toy bird on a stick, and when you swing it around your head, it goes, brrr, brrr. You're a little old for that, aren't you, quiver lip? <laughs> it's not for me. I'm getting it for a young friend of mine. He loves toy birds. Don't alibi. If you like to swing birds around your head, come out and say so. <laughs> I don't like to swing birds. Believe me, it's for a kid I know. Now, will you please direct me to the toy department? Very well. It's on the third floor. Thanks. Like fun it is. <laughs> Never mind, I'll locate it myself. <laughs> Certainly a fine store to do business with. You walked in, Sugarfoot. Nobody dragged you. <laughs> oh, quiet. Come on, Mary. I think the toy department is over there in the back there. Say, Jack. What are you going to get me for a present? Well, Mary, I thought I'd buy you something to go with that sable muff I gave you last year. Sable muff? That was rabbit. It was sable. Rabbit. I was walking through the farmer's market yesterday, and it snapped at a head of lettuce. <laughs> Listen, Mary, a lot of sables are vegetarians, too. And it happens that... Oh, my goodness. Now, look, buddy, I'm warning you for the last time. Take your hand out of my pocket. Ouch! My finger. You asked for it. Now, give me back that mousetrap. <laughs> Hand it over. The cheese, too? <laughs> There's no cheese in it. This one's for pickpocket. Now, get away from here. Now, Mary, I think if we go down this... Uh-oh. Uh Say, look, Jack, look who's coming. Isn't that your boarder? Oh, yes. Hey, Mr. Billingsley. Mr. Billingsley. Hello there, Mr. Benny. Doing your Christmas shopping, I see. <laughs> Yes, I'm in here buying a few knickknacks. Me too. I found some lovely knicks, but what floor are the knacks on? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know. You'll have to ask the floor walker. They'd get along fine. Yeah. By the way, Mr. Billingsley, I suppose I shouldn't ask you this, but uh, what are you getting me for Christmas? Well, Mr. Vanny, you know how crazy you are about raising flowers. Yes. And you certainly like to win a prize at the next flower show. Yes, yes. So I'm getting you a hundred pound sack of fertilizer. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Hmm. Well, it's a practical gift, I'll say that. Come on, Mary, there's the toy department at the end of this aisle here. <laughs> toy department is on the next floor. Oh, wait a minute. Here's the perfume counter. I think I'll get some for my sister, Ethel. Well, don't spend a lot of money on perfume for her. She's so nearsighted, she can't read the label. <laughs> no, but she can smell like a bloodhound, so it's got to be good. Well, go ahead, buy it. Uh, pardon me, miss. I'd like to get... Well, some... Mary Livingston, of all people. <laughs> well, for heaven's sake. Dolly Dinkelhoff. <laughs> Dolly Dinkelhoff? It's Dolly Dinkelhoff Harrington now. I finally got a man. It can't be the Harrington I know. He'd have wired me. <laughs> What's new with you, Mary? Anything exciting? Oh, I'm still on the radio. 
You know, I always thought you'd marry Butch Leroy, the fellow that worked at the gas station. <laughs> oh, we broke up, Dolly. I haven't seen Butch in years. Well, you should have hung on to him. He's got his own gas station now with three grease pits. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Can't be Tom. Hey, what's this gentleman with the gray hair? Anything serious? <laughs> hmm. Oh, pardon me, Dolly. This is my boss, Jack Benny. Oh, hello, miss. Gee whiz. Jack Benny? You know, I heard you do Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde last week. What a perfect <laughs> can't be Tom Harrington. <laughs> well, thanks, uh, thanks, Dolly. Uh, come on, Mary, uh, you can get your perfume later. All right. <laughs> so long, Dolly. So long, Mary. I'll tell Butch I've seen you. <laughs> hmm. Butch Leroy. I bet that Butch was a corny guy. At least he was a gentleman. What do you mean, he was a gentleman? When all the lights went out the other night, you grabbed me and wanted a neck. <laughs> well, I was so nervous, I didn't know what I was doing. Well, look who's here. Hiya, Jackson. Mary. Are you shopping around too, Phil? No, nah, I'm just waiting for Alice. She's up there in the, uh, in the beauty saloon having her hair done. <laughs> She's only got one line on the program. Can't get it right. <laughs> In the first place, that's salon, not saloon. <laughs> Incidentally, ringlet. <laughs> ringlet, why aren't you up there? Because it ain't a saloon. <laughs> oh, that's a sharpie. See you later, Phil. So long. Oh, say, Jackson, I just seen Billingsley walking out of the store with a big sack over his shoulder. What's the idea? That's my Christmas present, Phil. Boy, am I going to have flowers. <laughs> Big ones yet. And how? Uh -huh. hmm? Come on. <laughs> huh? Come on, Jack. We're going to get that toy for Dennis. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute, Mary. Phil just reminded me of something. Let's go down to the bargain basement and get some cheap ties for the boys in the orchestra. <laughs> oh, Jack, why don't you get him some good ties? Look, Mary, as long as the elastic snaps in them, they're happy. <laughs> Come on. Here's the door to the basement right here. Jack, I am not going down to the bargain basement this time of the year. It's murder down there. Oh, it won't be so bad. Open the door. Okay. <laughs> it is. It is pretty crowded with that. Come on, we'll get Dennis's toy. I can just see that kid's face Christmas morning. Yeah? Oh, here's the toy department. Where's the clerk? Here he comes. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the toy department. What can I do for you? <laughs> mm, uh, look, I'm interested in a toy bird on a stick for a young friend of mine. Well, I don't know if we got one, but here's a novelty that all the kids is crazy about. A chemistry set. <laughs> A chemistry set? Yeah. You know, it's a science thing with a lot of chemicals. Oh. Oh, you mean chemicals, huh? Take it, Jack. It'll make a beautiful Christmas present. Mary. Well, it's nice, all right, but aren't these chemicals a little powerful? Oh, are they? I give one of a youngster on his birthday, and he blew up three safes before they got him. Well, I don't think I care for that. I'm interested in a toy bird on a stick. Well, here's something that's not only fascinating, but entertaining as well. A mama doll. Uh, a mama doll? Yeah. See how it works? Well, ain't that the nuts? <laughs> <laughs> yes, a, um, a mama doll is a lovely gift, but I'm afraid that... You know, I used to have one of those things when I was a kid, but my big brother broke it. 
And when I woke up the next morning, there was my poor little dolly with the head all smashed to pieces. <laughs> well, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Can I borrow your hanky? <laughs> yes, yes, here you are. Now, look, mister, what I really want is a long stick with a toy bird on hey, the... Hey, Jack, here's one. Isn't this what you want? Yes, that's it. A yellow canary on a stick. Look, Mary, here's the way it works. You swing it around your head like this, and the bird goes... Hey, mister, what's the matter with this? It doesn't work. What's wrong with it? Look, I'm swinging it around my head, and the bird is supposed to go... Burr! Burr! Buying it for a little boy, huh? <laughs> what? You didn't want to play with it yourself. Not much you didn't. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mr. Floor Walker. I was just testing it out to see if it worked. It's supposed to go brrrr, and it doesn't. The reason it doesn't go brrrr is because you broke it. I did no such thing, did I, Mary? No, you broke the mama doll. I didn't break the mama doll. It was this guy's brother years ago. When I woke up in the morning, the poor little Oh, for heaven's sake. Now, look, Mr. Stroh. All I came in here for was a bird on a stick. And if you haven't got that one, it goes... I'll go someplace else. And hey, you're not going until you pay for the one you broke. Oh, Mr. Hall. Oh, Mr. Hall. All right, all right, I'll pay for it. But I'll tell you one thing. This is the last time I'll ever do something in this store. And here's something else. I've been talking before. And you're the only one I like to walk along. Fine lot of shopping I did today. I'll have to start over tomorrow. <laughs> Gee, it's getting dark. Yeah. Say, hey, Rochester, how are the headlights on this car? Boss, they've been ready for a blackout since 1922. <laughs> well, turn them on anyway. By the way, Rochester, are there any blackouts down on Central Avenue? Yes, sir. Night and day. <laughs> Oh, what I meant was... Hey, Jack, there's that policeman who's going to give you a ticket. Oh, yeah, slow down, Rochester. Howdy, officer. Got my shopping done. Going back home now. Hey, step on it, Zeke. Okay, boss. Bye, Patty. <laughs> Have you good people ever noticed how a tempting meal can cheer you right up? It needn't be elaborate. Fragrant old-fashioned beef stew will do it. But be sure to wind up with a grand dessert. A dessert like Mary Livingston's favorite. It's called Jell-O Pear Whip. The most enticing dish you ever dipped a spoon in. And here's how you make it. Prepare as usual. <clears throat> prepare as usual one package of Jell-O imitation strawberry flavor. Chill it until cold and syrupy. Then place in a bowl of cracked ice and whip it up till it's fluffy and thick and luscious, like rose-colored whipped cream. Next, open a can of pears and fold in a cup of pear pulp into your whipped jello. Arrange slices of pears in sherbet glasses. Fill each glass with jello and garnish with gay green cherries. Now just picture it. Individual sherbets filled to the brim with summer sweet strawberry jello whipped to a fluffy rose-colored foam. Both canned pears and strawberry jello are being featured by many grocers all next week. So get both of them and try a treat. But remember, jello makes any gelatin recipe taste extra good because the locked in process protects the flavor for your complete enjoyment. This is the last number of the 11th program in the current jello series, and we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Gee, Mary, I'm so tired from all that shopping. Imagine how you feel if you'd have bought something. Oh, I'd have been a wreck. Good night, folks. Jell-O program is written by Bill Morrow and Ed Beloyd. <laughs>